began the season not unreasonably with high expectations. For both clubs, though, there's been very little to celebrate. Each still had a chance today to salvage something from the season by overtaking Dundee United for a UEFA Cup place. Today's losers, though, could certainly kiss goodbye to that prospect. The commentator at Tynecastle is Jock Brown. Hearts have to do without the services of Gary Mackay, who is suspended after being ordered off against St Johnston last week. But they do have John Robertson back to partner Scott Crabb in attack. And the presence of Scotland coach Andy Roxburgh on the stand gives Robertson the chance to stake his claim for a place in the starting lineup for the European Championship match in San Marino on Wednesday. The major omission in that Celtic lineup is Paul Elliott, who is out through suspension for the rest of the season. Peter Grant is also out through injury. Anton Rogan wears number five, and there are places for Steve Fulton and Mark McNally. And it must be like the beginning of the season for Charlie Nicholas. Starting a match for Celtic for only the 11th time in his second spell at Parkhead. He has scored four goals, including a double against Dunfermline last week. And the referee this afternoon, Mr. Les Mottram from Wilson Town in Lanarkshire, a man who was appointed to the FIFA list earlier this year. So ideal conditions both overhead and underfoot for the start of this match of immense potential importance as far as a European place next season is concerned. Hearts trailing Celtic by just two points and should Dundee United win the cup, one of those two sides could qualify for a UEFA Cup place. So the stakes are high and that's reflected by a very healthy attendance here at Tynecastle. George Wright's header, that's Derek White playing it out. I'm very interested to spectator in the director's box with McStay and Collins, McPherson and Robertson, all candidates for places on Wednesday. Here's Steve Fulton breaking from his position one in the left side of midfield. Cross for Coyne. Nicholas takes over. That was great play by Nicholas. Screening the ball there from McPherson. A bit of wrestling going on there. The referee sees that as six of one and half a dozen of the other. Nicholas is disappointed. He thought he was being fouled by McPherson. Bannon's head flick. Here's Cahun going in behind Fulton. The other pass release for Crabb. Going outside McNally. And a fine effort by Crabb. Bonner was relieved to see that go wide of the upright, but what a fine opening move, an attack from Hearts. Scott Crabb doing so well here now. He almost tempted Mark McNally into a rash challenge. The fullback did well, and that shot was just off target. Well, a very bright start by Scott Crabb, answering Charlie Nicholas at the other end. Ricochet there between Levine and Coyne. There's Levine again. McPherson provides depth. Well, both sides opening up in 4 3 3 formations. So that should make for enterprising attacking football. Logan got in there ahead of Eamon Bannon, who celebrated his 33rd victory, uh, 33rd birthday just about nine days ago. Headed away by Dubcek. Here's Robertson, now Bannon, Levine. And that's Crabb who was being pushed as the flying header came in from McKinley. Celtic living dangerously again in defence. A very strong appeal there for a penalty kick in the first instance. There's Cahoon with the corner. A bit of bumping and barging inside the six-yard box. Scott Crabb appears to have been penalised. Well, that certainly was a dangerous moment in front of Pat Bonner. Hearts coming very close indeed. The ball played in here very well indeed as it was laid back by Bannon. It was played in first time by Levine. Now, uh, McNally was going in behind Crabb, who went flying there, but McKinley almost managed to score with a header. Hearts have certainly opened up with lots of conviction. Here it's still by Dubcek. Barron's header, now Fulton. McLaren to Bannon, always offering width on the right for Hearts. That's 
beyond White for Robertson to chase. He needs support in the middle. And Crabb was just out of reach. Oh, Mark McNally was very cool about that. Extremely confident that Crabb couldn't get to the ball. But another let off for Celtic. But some fine play again, setting up that chance for Celtic, for Hearts rather, with John Robertson doing so well, breaking into space behind Derek White and lofting that across the six yard line for Crabb to go flying in. Taken there well by Crabb, but only for the benefit of Anton Rogan. Over to the far side is Collins, who hasn't been seen much in the match so far. This is Miller. He's away from McKinley. That's good play by Miller. Can they almost recover? Nicholas goes up well. Well, a reminder there for the last defence that not only is Charlie Nicholas so skillful on the ground, he's still a threat in the air. This cross from Joe Miller. Charlie Nicholas gets up between two defenders to glance the header wide. Nicholas. Played forward by McNally. Space now for Collins. Coyne is through the middle. Miller's on the right. Nicholas supporting square. Well, that's a fine effort. John Collins almost caught Nicky Walker napping with that effort. What an inspired piece of play by the Celtic midfield player. Had plenty of time to assess the whole position coming forward. Looked up, checked that onto his left foot. Saw the chance for the shot. And what a relief here for Nicky Walker. That was very close. The free kick goes against Rogan. He's totally frustrated about that and he's going to find himself in trouble. Well, he clearly thought he was fouled by John Robertson and when he saw the referee give the free kick to Hearts, he reacted very angrily indeed. Is now to be under some control as referee Mottram takes out the yellow card for the first time in the match. So Billy Neal easing to the floor there beside Tommy Craig and Brian Scott. Played forward by Wright. Cahoon goes across to look for a slip up from Dubcek who was aware of his presence, that's why he turned the ball out. So five minutes remaining in the first half. John Cahoon with the corner. There's McPherson. Well, normally looking for chances in the air, but that's a reasonable chance with his right foot there as the ball broke kindly for him. Celtic defence having difficulties with this corner. And over the top of Levine, and McPherson drives it wide. McPherson's had the return by Fulton, there's Coyne. Collins did well, this is Nicholas. Looking for a shooting chance, still Nicholas. Well, there are those glimpses of Nicholas magic from time to time around the penalty box. Hasn't yet been able to set himself up perfectly for a shot at goal. But that was clearly his intention here, deceiving these defenders, but off balance when he let fly. White playing it forward, here's Crabb, finding a space inside. He's blocked by White, here's Derek Ferguson, now a chance for McKinley. He didn't catch that properly. Ferguson's header. White helps it on, he was fouled though by Fulton. The free kick taken quickly from the wrong place by Crabb. So it's played back to Derek Ferguson for the free kick. Leaving it now to Bannon. There's McPherson getting a touch and Joe Miller hooks the ball to safety. But it's a corner kick to Hearts who are ending the first half as they began it on the attack. 
Well, into time added on for injuries in the first half. Cahun's corner kick. Bonner well, couldn't get to that. Well, he appeared to be impeded. The ball finds his way into the net, but the half time whistle had gone. There was no problem in the end for Pat Bonner, but Hart, who started so impressively, then were pegged back for a spell by Celtic. Came back powerfully towards half time. It's a very close encounter, and the second half will be full of interest. At half time, Hearts nil, Celtic nil. A goal from John Cahoon won the corresponding match in November for Hearts. And they'll be looking for something similar in this second half to go on equal points with Celtic in the chase for Europe. It certainly was a very competitive first half with neither side managing to take full control of the midfield at any stage. Wright recovered well. Well, Derek Ferguson came through the gap there. It would have been a good advantage, but referee Mortimer would have loved there. A whistle had gone just before he realised that Ferguson was in the clear. McLaren is over the free kick. Aiming that for McPherson. It's too long, there's Robertson. Setting it up for Crabb. Great tackle there by Derek White for Celtic. And on the break, Celtic could cause problems for half now. Nicholas on the left. Coyne on the right. It's through for Coyne, he's onside. First to go wide, looking up to play an accurate ball inside. Here's Coyne again. Nicholas goes in, that's a fine block by Walker. Excellent goalkeeping by Nicky Walker. Well, Hart's coming so close a moment ago at the other end when Scott Crabb's shot was blocked by Derek White, but then as this ball came across, Nicholas almost squeezed the ball in at the post. Taken short by Miller to Fulton. Made away by Levine, helped on its way by Wright. And this is next day. Check has to retrieve the ball as Hart's defence pushes out. Well, Billy McNeil would have been very angry, I think, had Dubcek made an error as the last defender with the ball at his feet. So safety first in the end. McLaren. something of a stalemate at the moment inside still probing for the chance to open up the opposing defence Celtic get the throw Miller has found space that's for Coyne a good chance again for Celtic there's Nicholas Fortuitous. It was a well-constructed move involving Miller and Coyne. There's going to be a change made by Hearts at this stage in the match. John Cahoon goes off. And the replacement is Wayne Foster. There's Dubcek, this is Collins. Done well by McKinley. Grab towards Foster. He's kept the ball in play well. Promising this for Hearts, but Rogan was covering extremely well, coming in behind his central defence. Good fullback play, that. McKinley's throw as Hearts try to step up the pace in their attempt to get back on level terms. This is Joe Miller. Stepping away from right. Composed play there by Levine at the back. 
making sure the Hearts have the throw. And McNally took a blow in the face there from Crabb. The referee didn't see, accidental I'm sure, but no consolation at the moment to McNally. Here's Derek White. That's for Coyne. An awkward bounce there over the Celtic striker. Poor kick out that from Walker, releasing a chance for Collins. Nicholas goes ahead. Well, the pass had to be measured exactly right there for Nicholas. Making a diagonal run, looking for it to be played into the inside right channel. Here's Fulton, brought down by Crab. A wild tackle there by Scott Crab. White's free kick. Give Rogan. Giving him much opportunity there to make progress. But here's Tommy Coyne. Now that would have been a fine goal. He tried to lift that on the volley over the keeper. Not quite enough height, but enterprising play nonetheless. An awkward one for Bonner coming out of the sun, and that's excellent goalkeeping. Fine play by the Celtic goalkeeper, and a good throw out to Rogan. Back now with Fulton, there was a late tackle there on Rogan. And Anton Rogan is in serious trouble now, he's going to be ordered off. An angry reaction there, it would appear, by Rogan. He's waving away the Celtic players, well, the only possible result here can be a red card for Rogan. Steve Fulton is irate, but Paul McStay calming him down. Willie McNeil is on his feet. He knows what's going to happen, but he's trying to keep things calm. He's reorganizing his 10-man team. And the red card is shown to Anton Rogan. Well, for a second booking, effectively. An angry reaction over there on the far touchline. Celtic are reduced to ten men. Well, the reorganisation has been carried out. There's Levine. Inches wide on the post. Well, relief there for Pat Bonner. It looked as though the keeper may well have had that covered, but it was a great free kick by Bannon. Look how well Levine gets up to this. It could scarcely have been closer. Celtic are anxious to make a substitution. Hefty collision there. Crab and Fulton involved, and the referee, I think, is going to have a word with Scott Crab. This Steve Fulton. And this time the booking is for the Hearts player. It's Scott Crab. A hefty clash there with Steve Fulton. And referee Mortem is now going across to have words with the Celtic manager. He certainly has become agitated in the last few minutes. So the Celtic manager appears to be pretty well under control. Certainly making his point to the referee. Still the substitution is being held up to make sure that Fulton is able to continue normally. Kick out there from Bonner, the chase is on for Miller with McPherson. He had to be careful there with that pass back. Levine nudges the ball on. And another heavy tackle there, Scott Crabb is the victim. It looked like a little spot of retaliation there by Steve Fulton. Fulton has certainly become heated in the last 15 minutes or so in this game. And referee Mottram has more paperwork to do. Crab is on the ground. Steve Fulton is in trouble. And the Celtic players are hoping, as is Steve Fulton, of course, that the card will be yellow and not red. It just looked like a reckless tackle on Crab. 
A yellow card it is. Well, definitely a suggestion of retaliation here. That late, clumsy tackle by Fulton on Crab. And now Joe Miller is being withdrawn and Chris Morris can come on. That's the change made by Celtic. Bringing on a defender for a striker. Uh, they reduced to ten men. Another chance for McKinley. He's the back fourth player allowed to push forward now for Hearts. Taking on McNally. Well, that's good play. And a fine cross up goes Bannon. And a brilliant save from Bonner. The ball almost seemed to be over the line when it was claimed there by Pat Bonner. Fine play by McKinley. An excellent leap and header by Bannon. And that's a magnificent save. Well, that might well earn the points for Celtic. It's going to be another substitution inevitably made by Celtic. It was absolutely certain they'd make the second change before the end to waste another few seconds. It's Jerry Craney who's waiting to come on. Player going off is the goal scorer, Charlie Nicholas. Well, Nicholas getting a great ovation from the Celtic fans as he leaves the field. Hearts have to get the ball forward quickly. Well, into it, stoppage time now. Hearts press for an equaliser. There's Fulton's clearance. Forward comes McLaren. Fulton again, using Paul McStay in the middle. That's for Morris. Caught by McPherson. Morris got just a little touch on the ball before McPherson arrived. Well, it looks as though Celtic may have weathered the storm.